from the Lord shall renew their strength. Come on, who's renewing their strength in here right now? If you're waiting on God, I want you to open up your mouth and bless him right now. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, those of us that are waiting upon the Lord. Waiting upon the Lord. The word of God says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Lift your hands and heart and receive the new strength. There's new strength unto you right now. He is pouring out his strength. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not get weary. Come on. Is there some runners in here? I got some things that God done called me to run out in this lifetime. And Father, I thank you that we are not getting weary. Because you made a way, oh God. Come on. He made a way. Oh yeah. Yes, oh God, he made a way. Even as we stand here this morning, look around the room. You're looking at a miracle. You're looking at a miracle. You are a miracle. You are a miracle. You're the blessed of God. You're the blessed of God. You're the blessed of God. Hey, yeah, no, 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 no. Cause we're standing here only because you made a way. Hey, yeah, no, 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 Shonda. I don't know, something just shifted in this atmosphere. I don't know if y'all feel it and if you see it, but I need you to get with it. I did a little about Kanda. Cause there's a shift. There's a shift in the room. There's a shift in the spirit. And God is bringing forth manifestations today in the name of Jesus. Hey, say. I ain't forget about you, those of you online. Welcome. We so glad you logged in. All of that. But there's a move of God. Just come on and get with us. We getting ready to press in to the next level in this house. Hey, say. Because signs, wonders, and miracles shall follow them. That be lean. Now I got a couple of believers in here. Come on, how many believers in the house? What a little call, yeah, a little call. Yes, oh God. Oh. just press press in your presence and never leave this place again if I could just press press in your presence and leave all my cares behind me for I will be old and I still believe I will just lay lay at your feet for I will be old you believe I will just praise, praise at your feet right here in your presence. Right here in your presence. If I could just press, press in your presence, behold. Just press, press in your presence, and never leave this place. If I could just press, press in your presence, and leave all my cares behind me. Oh, for I will be whole, and I still believe I will just lay, lay at for I will be I still believe I will just praise, praise 
salvation and glory, honor and power unto the Lord our God. For the Lord our God is mighty. Yes, the Lord our God is omnipotent. The Lord our God, He is wonderful. Sing hallelujah. Hallelujah. Salvation. Salvation and glory. Honor and power.
Hallelujah. 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 Now, if the Lord has been good to you, what do you say? Yeah. If the Lord woke you up this morning, what do you say? Yeah. If the Lord graced you to be here today, yes. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We bless his holy name this morning for his great and awesome power manifesting in our lives. Oh, I know he's a good God today. And the Bible teaches us that we can taste and see how good our God is. So we sing hallelujah to the King of Kings. We sing hallelujah to the Lord of Lords. We sing hallelujah to the great I Am. He has been so good to us. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 Yes. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. We bless the name of Jesus Christ. We bless his holy and his magnificent magnificent name this morning. Come on and give the Lord a hand clap of praise in the house of God. We are so thankful. As the Bible tells us, I was glad when they said unto me, come let us go to the house of the Lord. And we are so thankful to be in God's house in his presence on this morning. And we truly bless and praise the name of our God and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Even as we stand in his presence right now, remember what God told Moses. Moses, the place that you are standing on it's called holy ground. Whenever we stand in the presence of God, we're standing in holy ground. We're standing in that place of liberty. We're standing in that place of freedom. And so when we think about the goodness of our Lord and Savior, the goodness of Jesus, all that he's done for us. Our souls ought to help and just cry out hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah to the great I Am. Hallelujah to the Alpha and the Omega. Hallelujah to the beginning and the ending, the first and the last. Oh, we bless his name today because he is worthy of all the glory and the honor. The name of our Lord Jesus Christ is worthy of praise. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning as we wake up and we rise up to give your name a shout. For the Bible teaches us that we ought to shout unto God with a voice of triumph. With a voice of victory, we shout unto you today. Knowing that all of our help comes from you. You are the source of our everything. And Lord, we thank you that we have this privilege and this honor to have health and strength 
the ability and use of our limbs. Lord, we have nothing to complain about because you give us life, the gift of life, this day. Tomorrow is not promised, but this is the day of salvation. This is the day of hope and healing. This is the day of deliverance and breakthroughs. We thank you right now. All of those that have come from far and near, we thank you that they're in this Holy Ghost charged atmosphere, experiencing your worship and your praise. And Lord, even as we are experiencing your presence right now, we also want to experience the power that comes through your word. The instructions that help us in our everyday lives. We thank you now for a spirit of practicality, but also a spirit of obedience. That Lord, everyone under the sound of my voice would see their place, see the opportunity to grow and to build and to live lives that are pleasing and acceptable unto you. We thank you right now in the name of Jesus that no one under the sound of our voice today will leave this house of God the same way that they came in. We thank you for people being delivered, saved, and set free. Not only at Love Fellowship Church, but all around the world. We decree and declare your great and your awesome power. That it will and it shall manifest in our lives. And it is in Jesus' precious and holy name we pray. And all in agreement, come on and shout with me, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, amen. Well, before you take your seats, welcome your neighbor, amen. We welcome you to Love Fellowship Church today. We are so thankful that you, that you are part of the worship experience this morning. We know that, amen, that God has allowed you to be here on purpose and for his divine plan and purposes to be fulfilled in your life. So we welcome you. We welcome you, and we thank God for you. Amen. We are just so thankful for all that are here and those even that had it in their hearts to be here but couldn't be here this morning. We thank God, and we bless his holy name. Amen. We are so grateful, and I believe there's a a little celebration after service, I believe. Amen. All right. Praise God. Amen. So we will, we will move right along in the word. Amen. I know that there's a celebration that, that Minister Shauna wants all of you to join in with her and her family immediately following the worship celebration in the fellowship hall. Amen. Everyone say live free. The title that we, in, that we gave last week to this series was entitled, Live Free. Amen. Turn with me to Galatians chapter 5. Let us just launch out from there today. Galatians chapter 5. It's one thing to have a concept of freedom, but it's a whole other thing when you're actually making it an everyday part of your life. That's what living free is all about. Amen. Galatians chapter 5. We're going to hang out here for a little bit uh, and then we'll go to several other scriptures. But in the New Living Translation, Galatians chapter 5, notice, notice what the Word of God says in the New Living Translation. The Apostle Paul is writing this letter to the church of Galatia. And he's given them some very powerful and very practical instructions on freedom. Notice what he says in verse 13, for you have been called to live in freedom. Wow. He says you have been called 
to live in freedom. How many of you know that's good news? Amen. It, the good news is, is that every one of us has been called by God and his son Jesus Christ to live free. Every single one of us, amen, has been called to live free. This is a choice that we have to make each and every day. But if you are a born-again believer today, if you receive Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, that calling is upon your life. You may not have a calling to be a pastor. You may not have a calling to be an evangelist. You may not have a calling to be a minister or, or to sing on the choir or the praise and worship team. But we are all called to live free. We're all called to this same freedom. That Jesus Christ died for us to have. Notice what it says again in Galatians 5 and 13 in the New Living Translation. For you have been called to live in freedom, my brothers and sisters. But don't use your freedom, listen to this, to satisfy your sinful nature. Instead, use your freedom. Everybody say, I got to do something with my freedom. Instead, use your freedom to serve one another in love. So when we think about what Jesus did for us, the fact that he died, he was crucified, and he rose on the third day with all power in his hand, when we think about it and we remind ourselves of what we talked about last week when Jesus talked about how he died, died to set us free from the bondage or the slavery of sin. In fact, we read it last week where the Apostle Paul said in Romans the sixth chapter that the wages of sin is what? Death. And so we understand that there's a consequence to a man living a life or a lifestyle that is contrary to the word of God. That's really what sin is all about. It's living lifestyles or having behaviors or actions that cause us to displease God or to grieve God. Sin is disobedience to God and his word. But here's the truth. Jesus, amen, gave us a spiritual emancipation. When you think about, amen, what Jesus said in, in, in the Gospels, he said you cannot serve two masters. He said you will either hate one or love the other or vice versa. You cannot serve God and mammon. And one translation said mammon is money, but mammon represents the world system. And so, amen, whoever you're serving, you are slave to that Thing. And really, it's not a thing, it's a spirit, amen? So if you're serving to be more like the world, then guess what? You're a slave to the God of this world. But if you're serving to be more like Jesus Christ, then you are, amen, called by God to live free. You can't live free on your own. None of us, not even myself, no matter how much you study the word, no matter how much you pray, none of us have the willpower or the fortitude to live free on our own. So it presents a challenge. It presents often a daily struggle. How do we live free so that we can please God in the liberty that Jesus Christ has given to us? I want to submit to you that there's a warfare going on inside of us. How many of you know that? There's a spiritual warfare that's taking place on the inside of each and every one of us. Whether you believe it or not, whether you admit it or not, we constantly are in a battle. Amen. We are constantly in a fight. And some of us may be hearing this for the first time, but it's good that you're hearing it. And some of us, it is a reminder, but it's also good that you be reminded that, amen, your opponent doesn't like to lose. 
Satan is always looking for a way to do three things to steal, kill, and destroy. He never likes to lose a battle, and he never likes to lose a fight. And I believe the Apostle Paul, amen, was preparing the church of Galatia for the internal battle and struggle that they were facing, whether they realized it or not. But I have good news today, amen, that God's word has the power to transform every one of our lives. But let's look at this warfare. I kind of gave you the headline, but let's look into the meat of the text in Galatians chapter 5. And let's go back up, amen. Well, let's go to verse 16 for the sake of time. Galatians 5 and 16. So he says here, amen. So I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your life. Did everybody hear that? He says again, so, so I say, the Apostle Paul says, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. The sinful nature wants to do good. It wants to please God. Wake up. It's opposite of that. The scripture, in fact, says in verse 17 of Galatians 5, the sinful nature wants to do evil, which is just the what? Opposite of what the spirit wants. I'm reading in the New Living Translation. So the opposite of what the spirit of God wants is, amen, the, the, is sinfulness or the sinful nature. The sinful nature or the nature that's controlled by lust of the flesh, by the desires of this world and the cravings of and appetites for things that are apart from the word of God, it is the opposite of what God wants you to do. And if it is the opposite, then guess what? It is contrary and it is working against you living free. We were all born with the same sinful nature. You and I all have this thing called flesh or this earth suit called a body. And this body craves and desires the things that it wants and it wants what it wants. And so it's a constant battle of not only the body but also of the mind to live free. Paul knew that the church of Galatia was struggling in these areas. And so he brought this word and this epistle to give them a sense of hope that they don't have to be bound. They can be, amen, spiritually emancipated. They don't have to be incarcerated, amen, by the, by the temptations and the desires of this world or the sinful nature that they're, that they're living in in this world. They can be free from those things. And so he goes on again in Galatians 5 and 17. He says again, the sinful nature wants to do evil, which is just the opposite of of what the spirit wants. And the spirit gives us desires, listen to this, desires that are opposite of what the sinful nature desires. So there's a battle. These two forces, everybody say these two forces. See, they are the most powerful forces in the world. They are the most powerful forces that we will ever face because, amen, if you have a hater on your job, that hater, even if they're the boss of you, the supervisor of you, that hater cannot kill, steal, and destroy what God has already put inside of you. But what that hater can do is be under the influence of Satan and try to make your life most miserable. But we don't wrestle against the hater, amen? 
We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. The Bible teaches us that in Ephesians 6. But against the principalities, the powers, the rulers of darkness of this world, the spiritual wickedness in high places, these are where the attacks come from. I pray that you're paying attention today. These two forces, the Bible says, are constantly fighting each other. So you are not free to carry out your good intentions. The whole point of what Satan wants to do, once you get saved, once you receive Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, the whole point of what he wants to do is discredit you. The whole point of what he wants to do is say, yeah, see, they're just another hypocritical Christian. They have no strength to live the life that they profess they live. It would be a shame if God left us in that state of mind. That we have nothing to fight with. It would be a shame if God left us in that place where the devil could just run roughshod over us. But I submit to you, he did not. Amen. Notice verse 18. But when you are directed by the Spirit, everybody say the Holy Spirit. You are not under obligation to the law of Moses. When you follow the desires, verse 19, of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. Now, what I'm about to read to you is not of an all-inclusive list of sins. But I believe that these are sins that the church of Galatia were dealing with and struggling with at the particular time that Paul wrote this letter. And if we be real with ourselves, everything I'm about to read are struggles for the body of Christ today. Notice what he says as he lists, the apostle Paul lists this, these, the, the, the temptations that are being thrown at the born-again believers. He says, when you follow the desires of your sinful nature, here are the results. He says, the results are very clear. Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, dissension, divisions, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like these. This is the warfare. This is the battle. This is what keeps, amen, so many Christians undercover. This is what keeps so many Christians in a constant state of struggle. And if it, if it was just a one-off, then we can maybe say, well, that was just for the church of Galatia, that these things don't really apply to me. But let me, let me amplify it even louder in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. We're talking about the warfare that takes place in every one of our lives. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, starting at verse number 9, in the New Living Translation, notice Paul again to another congregation. Notice what he says. He says, do you not realize that those who do wrong will not inherit the kingdom of God? In other words, he was letting the church of Corinth know because they had a boldness with what they were doing to where they felt like, you know what, I can do whatever I want to do and there's no consequence. I can live however I want to live and there's no penalty for what I do. The sad part about where the body of Christ is today there are many that bought that same lie. There are many that are being deceived right now and saying, I can sing songs, and I'm not talking about praise team here or any other. I'm talking in general right now. 
I can sing songs. I can, I can, I can, amen, watch something online. But it doesn't really apply to how I live. And see, we'll never be victorious and we'll never live free if we don't start applying the word of God to how we live. As long as how we live is separate from how we worship, then guess what? We'll continue to be hypocritical. He says, those who indulge in sexual sin or worship idols or commit adultery or are male prostitutes or practice homosexuality, or are thieves, or greedy people, or drunkards, or abusive, or cheat people, none of these will inherit the kingdom of God. And I know I'm not getting a whole lot of amens. It is tight, and it is right, amen. Amen. Let me give you let me give you some insight. Sex outside of marriage is like playing with fire. And if you play with it long enough, you're going to get burned. If you missed it, the ABC National News gave a report back in April of 2023, just a couple of months ago. And said that nationally, across the United States, sexually transmitted diseases are at the highest level that they have been since in 70 years. This was on the national news, ABC, national news. The highest levels in 70 years. So that means that they were dating back to the time before they had penicillin. So even with penicillin, people are still, amen, getting infected with sexually transmitted, transmitted diseases today higher than they were 70 years ago. What does that tell us? That it's not about the penicillin. It's about what's in your heart. Because see, what's in your heart will produce the actions in your life. In fact, when you look at the rates of HIV and AIDS, North Carolina is ranked in the top 10 nationally. Out of 50 states, ranked in the top 10. More cases than New Jersey and Pennsylvania. Almost as many cases as the state of New York. And we say, I'm not hurting anybody. I'm not, I'm just doing me. I'm just being who I want to be. Now, don't shoot the messenger, amen. But it would be spiritual malpractice if I just came in here and gave you a word that, you, that makes you feel good. And doesn't produce, amen, a result that's pleasing to God. I wouldn't be a true man of God if I did that. But the Bible tells us that we have so many now that are running to places because they have itching ears. They don't want to hear this because this affects their lifestyle their attitudes and their behaviors. But Paul was in a position where he didn't have just one church he was dealing with, but he had two churches. He had the church of Corinth and the church of Galatia, and they were all in this inner spiritual warfare, battle, and struggle, and Paul was trying to let each and every one of them know Jesus died to set you free. There is no new sin under the sun. 
you can take a song, a secular song, and break down the lyrics today, and it'll match lyrics from 50, 60 years ago. Because at the end of the day, amen, if they're leading you in a direction away from God, that is, that is as ancient as Paul's text to the church of Corinth or the church of Galatia. In other words, amen, we must understand, realize, and recognize that we're in a serious battle. All of us, including myself, we are in a serious battle. We are in the fight for our spiritual lives. He goes on to say, as we continue in 1 Corinthians 6, he says, some of you were once like that, but you were cleansed. Anybody been cleansed through the blood of Jesus? He says, but you were cleansed. He's, he's giving them hope, amen. He says, you were made holy. <laughs> he said, you were made right with God, not because of your own righteousness, he said, but you were made right with God by the calling of the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the spirit of our God. See, amen, the Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians 5 and 21 that he who knew no sin became sin for us that we might become what? The righteousness of God through Christ Jesus. We don't know how to be right or righteous, but Jesus extended God's righteousness to us. You ought to thank God for that, amen. That Jesus extended the righteousness of God to each and every one of us. And when we receive Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior, that righteousness that he had, now it belongs to us. And so we cannot be what we want to be. We have to become new. We have to become a new creation. And once we become new, then guess what? The fight still continues because the enemy won't stop. I hate to tell you this, but the devil doesn't stop. I hate to tell you this, but sin will be in the earth as long as the earth remains. But it doesn't mean it has to be in you. I said it can be in the earth. We're not talking about that. We're talking about it being in you. In other words, being a part of your lifestyle, being a part of your mindset, being a part of your behaviors. How many of you know God, amen, has given us some great weapons? He's given us some great weapons. Because without the weapons of God, we would not be able to fight, amen? Amen. I'm going to remind you of this, but I'm going to remind it to you in 1 John 4 and 4 in the New Living Translation so that you can understand that living free is in your reach. You can do this. If you are a born-again believer, you can do this. I said if you are a born-again believer, you can resist the temptations that are being thrown at you each and every day. If you are a born-again believer, you can live the life that God's Word is commanding us to live on a daily and regular basis. You can do this. I challenge somebody to say, I can do this. See, you can do it if you submit to it. Notice what it says in 1 John 4 and 4. But you belong to God, my dear children. You have already won a victory over these people because the spirit who lives in you is greater than the spirit who lives in what? See, you have the greatness of God in you. How can you say God has left you hopeless and God has left you helpless? You have the greatness of God in you. Somebody ought to be able to say that. Amen. Amen. See, some people can't even fix their mouth to say it. I have the greatness of God in me. I have the greatness of God in me. I have the greatness of God in me. 
Even when you're going through your emotional state of mind, you ought to be able to look yourself in the mirror and say, self, I have the greatness of God in me. As long as Satan can keep your mouth closed, that greatness will never rise up in you. And you will live like you don't have greatness. Tell your neighbor, I've got greatness in me. See, this greatness is called the Holy Spirit. It's not called by your name. It's called by the name that God gave. It's called the Holy Ghost. God knew that you would have this battle. He knew that you would have this struggle. He knew that sin would get the best of you if he didn't do something about it. And he did something about it too, baby. He did something greater than what you can even imagine. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. He gave you a dynamic duo called the Word of God and the Holy Ghost. And between the two, they can kick and they can fight and they can keep you if you want to be kept. Sometimes you ought to just say, Holy Spirit, I need you to do some spiritual kicking. I need you to do some fighting on my behalf. Because there's a war going on. Do you know, as I read that statistic, this, this wasn't the church coming up with this statistic. This was the world. The, the, the world, the ABC National News said that we're in an epidemic of sexual immorality. This came from the world. That the rates of sexually transmitted diseases are at all time highs since the last 70 years. And it's not because there's a shortage of penicillin. not because there's a shortage of doctors that are wanting to treat you if you get burned. Because if you play with fire, you will get burned. I said that, amen. See, it's not doctors and medicines that's the problem. Where do you think the problem lies? <laughs> It lies right here and right here. See, you have to fix your mouth and say, I have the ability to let this greatness rule in me or let this greatness sit on the sideline in me. And so many Christians have decided they would let greatness sit on the sideline in them and, and instead of ruling and reigning in their lives. Are you receiving this today? Mm. Listen to this. When Jesus made the promise of the Holy Spirit, he was making a promise that he would give us supernatural ability, power, and might. He would give us supernatural power, ability, and might in order to fight. Because without the power of the Holy Spirit at work in our lives, we have nothing that we can truly fight with. Well, Pastor Anthony, I believe in the power of positive thinking. Pastor Anthony, I believe in willpower. That's, that, that's what we need. And I'm not going to sit here and, and, and poo-poo on positive thinking and willpower. Because they all, amen, have some effect. Positive thinking has some effect. 
It's been studied. Willpower has some effect. Self-control has some effect. But if God thought that that was enough, why would he send us the Holy Ghost? Can you imagine, amen, if the people that believed in positive thinking and willpower had the Holy Ghost and they allowed the Holy Ghost to have his way in their lives? Can you imagine if the greater one lived in the ones that said, I can will myself to do something? But there's so many orphaned children and abandoned children because people, amen, could not control their flesh. There's so many people dying of opioid addiction because people cannot control on their own their flesh. There's so many people that are taking that trank right now and getting holes in their heads and sores that they can see through their legs and see their bones because they don't have the ability to have that enough willpower to say no to that needle. And if you think we're not in an epidemic, amen, you've been sleeping under a rock. Because all the world is crying out and saying, we're in an epidemic. We're all-time highs of drug use and people dying of overdoses. All-time highs of this and that. Where is the Holy Ghost? Where is the Holy Ghost in your life? Where is this greatness in you? I find it hard to believe that with the Holy Spirit, amen, being sent by God, I find it hard to believe that everybody is relying upon the Holy Spirit. Because if we truly were, we wouldn't see what we're seeing happening in the world today. Turn with me to John 8. And 32. Really, I'll start at verse 31. Jesus says this in the New Living Translation. He says in John 8 and 31, Jesus said to the people who believed in him, you are truly my disciples if, if you remain faithful to my what? Teachings. And you will know the what? Truth. And the truth will what? See, the truth is found in this book right here called the Bible. But this is how the Holy Spirit works. The Holy Spirit, amen, is like a magnet. Uh, it, it, or, or it's like it's, a, it's attracted to the magnet. The Word of God is the magnet, rather. And the Holy Spirit is attracted to the magnet called the Word of God. And so wherever the Word is, that's where the Holy Spirit is trying to lead you. Wherever the Word says go, that's where the Holy Spirit is trying to take you. Whatever the Word says do, that's what the Holy Spirit is trying to show you to do. So if the word is over here and you're all the way over here, there's a problem. Is it the Holy Spirit's fault? One thing you need to learn about the Holy Spirit, and just like God, God will never make us do anything. We can curse God and die tonight, and he'll let you do it. You can go and join a cult tomorrow, and he'll let you do it. But he won't let you do it without convicting you. He won't let you do it without warning you. He won't let you do it without telling you, uh-uh, uh-uh, you need to go this way instead of going your own way. The problem is we become hard and callous in our hearts and in our hearing to the word of God and the Holy Spirit. The magnet of the word is not attractive enough anymore. I need to say this again. The magnet of the word is not attractive enough anymore. 
This is why you find churches in a race to spend millions and thousands and hundreds of thousands of dollars to attract people because they don't see the word as the magnet anymore. We need other things. And what's unfortunate about the other things is a lot of times the other things don't agree with God's word. And so what we do is in the body of Christ today, we start to introduce. Everybody say introduce. We start to introduce things that are pleasing to the flesh and we forget what Paul said in Galatians 5. And in Galatians 5, the apostle Paul said there's a war going on between the flesh and the spirit. And the spirit wants what it wants and the flesh wants what it wants. And they are opposite of one another. Who's pulling you which way? Who's drawing you? Are you drawn to the magnet of God's word or... Have you decided, you know what, the word ain't working for me no more. And you turn off the Holy Spirit. See, you can turn him off in you. He is a voice that speaks to you if you want to listen. But you got to be on the God channel, baby, in order to hear what his voice is saying. You will never get free, Jesus was saying, without the Holy Spirit leading you to the truth. He says in verse 32, and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. One of the powerful things about the Holy Spirit is the Holy Spirit is our teacher of what truth is. That's why when you open up the Bible and you read it for yourself, amen, you, you shouldn't read it without praying and asking the Holy Spirit to reveal to you those things that you don't understand. A lot of times people don't want to read the Word of God because they say, I don't understand it, and that's a true statement, but you got to go beyond your truth because God has given you the Holy Ghost. And what you do is you say, Holy Spirit, now I, in my natural mind, I cannot understand this. But I know you know all things. And the word Jesus said, the truth shall make me free. And I don't want to be in bondage. I want to be emancipated from every demonic force and power of the enemy. Does anybody want to be emancipated or do you want to be demonically incarcerated? We have to come against demonic incarceration where we say we're going to do it our way instead of Yahweh. That's bondage. That's slavery. And Christ died to set us free from that. So he says, and you will know the truth. And the truth is what? The word of God. And this truth will set you free. The Holy Spirit has a job to do in our lives, and his job is to lead us in the pathway of truth. Lead us into the pathway of righteousness. Lead us into the pathway of submission to God and his word. The Holy Spirit will give you warnings. That's called conviction. You do not have to go when the Holy Spirit says no. Is this too plain? When the Holy Spirit says no, his no is no. Sometimes the Holy Spirit will tell you, you know what? <laughs> that relationship, even though it may not be uh, anything right now, if you keep playing around with it, it's going to burn you. The Holy Spirit is a gift that helps us to live free. To be spiritually emancipated 
from the demonic incarceration in our minds, in our hearts, and in our lives that the enemy tries to hold over our heads each and every day. You cannot serve two masters. You have to make a choice. And regardless of what the next Christian is doing or the next believer is doing, what will you do? What will you do? Let's go back to 1 Corinthians 6. Somebody said it's tight, but it's right. Amen. 1 Corinthians 6. And I'm reading in the Amplified Classic Version. Going back. In the Amplified Classic, starting at verse number 11, it says this. And such some of you were once. But you were washed, clean purified by a complete atonement for sin and made free from the guilt of sin. And you were consecrated, set apart, hollowed, and you were justified, pronounced righteous by trusting in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ in the Holy Spirit of our God. This is how we're made righteous before God. But notice verse 12. Everything is permissible, allowable, and lawful to me. Paul was letting them know, listen, you can go out here and do whatever you want to do. You want to drink Hennessy? Go out here and drink Hennessy. You want to smoke a blunt? Go out here and smoke a blunt. You want to act buck wild? Go out here and do that. Just because it's lawful doesn't mean it's righteous. So are we going by what the law says or are we going by what the word of God says? He says all things are lawful. In other words, he was letting them know because they had a struggle with me. They had a struggle with certain other rules and regulations. He said, listen, all things are lawful. Now that you are born again, God is not trying to put you in bondage. He's trying to emancipate you from bondage. He said everything is permissible, allowable, and lawful for me. But not all things are what? I'm reading the Amplified Classic Version. He says, not all things, he says, not all things are helpful. You ought to ask yourself, am I doing things that are helpful or hurtful to myself? Is this thing that I'm engaged in, is it helping me advance? Is it helping me, amen, fulfill the vision of God over my life or is it hurting me? Imagine if you start asking yourself those questions before you stepped out and did something. Is this going to be a blessing or a curse to me? Is it going to free me or put me into bondage? See, we don't think. We just act. We just do. We just feel good and we do what we feel. And the sad part about it is they're very, <laughs> one statistic I read said that in the last three years, 2019 or four years, the rate of salvations and those that are accepting Jesus Christ and calling themselves Christians is going down. Think about the consequence of that. That means that there are less and less people being drawn to the magnet of God's word. And if there are less and less people in the world or in society drawn to the magnet of God's word, no wonder the, S, the, the statistics about STDs are going up. No wonder there's so many drug overdoses. No wonder the divorce rate is through the roof. 
Because, amen, the, the standards that we used to have, people are not following anymore. Even in the church, they're making new standards and they're making new ways. But it don't change the word of God. Well, Pastor Anthony, I didn't come to hear this this morning. But the truth shall set you free. Holy Spirit led you to hear this this morning. It's not what you came to hear or even what I want to preach. But it's what the Holy Spirit wants us to know. Well, will you hurry up, Pastor? Yeah, I'll hurry up. Amen. Verse 12 again. Everything is permissible. 1 Corinthians 6 and 12 in the Amplified Classic. Everything is permissible, allowable, and lawful for me, but not all things are helpful, good for me to do, expedient and profitable when considered with other things. Paul said, when I weigh out the good and when I weigh out the not so good, guess what? Even though I can do the not so good, is it going to be better for me to do the not so good? No. It's going to be better for me to follow the ways of the world or to follow the ways of God. It's better for you to follow the ways of God. Because all it takes is one time for you to step into the devil's trap and he burns you. All it takes is one time, amen, for you to say, I'll trust my friends more than I trust God. And you get the worst experience of your life. All it takes is one time. And none of us can afford that. None of us can. He says, everything is lawful for me, but I will not become a what? Slave of anything or be brought under its power. In other words, the apostle Paul is saying, I am spiritually emancipated. Jesus died to set me free. I am no longer incarcerated or in bondage to sin and death. And I refuse to make choices that hold me hostage to my flesh. And you and I ought to do the same thing. We ought to make a decision today. We no longer want to make choices that hold us hostage to our flesh. Paul goes on to talk about food because they had an issue with whether or not food, the eating of certain food given the idols, whether or not that was going to be pleasing to God or not. Many times we don't have this issue today. A lot of us, we eat whatever we want to eat. <laughs> And Paul was basically telling them, amen, to be careful about getting in bondage to the law when Christ has set them free from the law. Same thing he was telling the church of Galatia. But I like the latter part of verse, uh, 1 Corinthians 6, where Paul, amen, gives them some hope. He gives them some hope. And because of this hope that he gives them, amen, he, he, he lets them know, you know what? Let me show you some things as to why you do not want to cross over into this space. He goes on in verse number 17, and he says, well, starting at verse 16 in the Amplified Classic, and he says, or do you not know or realize that when a man joins himself to a prostitute, he becomes one body with her? The two, it is written, shall become one flesh. But the person who is united to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. That's the hope, amen? The hope is, is that you will desire to be more intimate with God than you are with anybody else. 
And if your intimacy with other people, especially as a single individual, if your intimacy with other people are coming between your relationship with you and God, then guess what? That's a relationship that you need to cut off. You don't need that relationship. Because it's running interference against the Holy Spirit. Whether you're a teenager, whether you're single, and even if you're married, to get entangled with somebody outside of your marriage, he says, that too, you become one flesh with that individual. And so it's not just for the singles, but it's for all of us, married, single, teenagers, whoever, that we realize that God wants our total intimacy. And only in marriage do you get the opportunity to be intimate with another individual in a sexual nature. So he says in verse 18, shun immorality and all sexual looseness. So should I be twerking on this stage? What if it's my wife? No, not even with my wife. That's looseness. That's looseness. That's looseness. That's looseness. The Bible tells us, let me tell you, the Bible says that marriage is holy and undefiled before God. But there are certain things you do in your bed. The bed is undefiled. But they're not things that you do in public for everybody to consume. Because if that's the case, what's the difference between that and pornography? What's the difference? If, if Pastor Renee and I can bump and grind in front of all of you all, what's the difference? Well, we married. Well, is that for all the eyes to see? And you got people lying on God and saying, they're free. They're getting free. Y'all in bondage, but they're free. No, no, no. It's the opposite. It's the opposite. Remember, Galatians 5, the spirit is opposite of the flesh. And so they're telling you it's freedom, but it's really bondage. It's really demonic incarceration. It's really a ploy by Satan to get us to go as far away as we can from the magnet of the word of God. And we got to be careful. There used to be a time and season in the body of Christ where certain things were holy and we knew the difference. But now all the lines are being blurred. And what Paul called freedom, now they're saying that's not freedom. And what Paul called bondage, now they're saying, now that's freedom. And so everything is being confused and mixed up and twisted up for a reason. So that you won't go to your Bible and find out the real truth. But the Lord said, teach it at Love Fellowship Church. He said, teach it on the internet. Teach it, teach it, teach it. He said, because my word would never change. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but God's word will never change. And so if you sit in a church and you never go to 1 Corinthians 6, then what does that say? That said that there's blindness on the eyes of the people because they, 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 the world knows the epidemics out there. But yet we act like everything's hunky-dory, just fine. But it's all over the news. He says again in 1 Corinthians 6 and 18, shun immorality and all sexual looseness. 
Flee from impurity in thought or word or deed. Any other sin which man commits is one outside of the body. But he who commits sexual immorality sins against uh, sins rather against his own body. There's no other sin that's been scientifically linked to death like sex, sexual sin. It's been scientifically linked to AIDS. It's been scientifically linked to sexual transmitted diseases, which also can lead to blindness, paralysis, and death. There's no other sin like that. And Paul says, we have an epidemic, and we need to check ourselves before we wreck ourselves. But here's the final part of this. He said, do you not know, verse 19, do you not know that your body is the temple, the very sanctuary of the devil? Did he say the devil? Then why are we doing so many devilish things? He didn't say the devil, did he? He said, do you not know that your body is the temple, the very sanctuary of the Holy Spirit who lives within you? He's not apart from you. He's not on the sideline. He's living in you. He wants to be an active part and play an active role in your daily life. He's in you. The greater one is in you. He lives in you whom, have, whom you have received as a gift from God. You are not your own. Where do we get in our minds that we are our own people? When we get born again, you give up control. That's a hard thing to hear. But when you are born again, you give up your control over your life so that the Holy Spirit can have control over your life. Because the Holy Spirit will lead you and guide you into all truths. And those truths are there to make you better and not worse. Everybody say, I'm precious. He says, you are bought, you were bought with a price. Purchased with a precious and paid for, made his own. You are precious. You are precious. Don't sell yourself for cheap. You're precious. And I'm not saying it. The word says it. Because the preciousness of the Holy Spirit was poured out upon you and lives in you. And that makes you precious. That makes you priceless. That makes you invaluable. That makes you beyond what the world can offer for you. So if you've not heard it in a while, I want you to know, hello, you are precious. Because you have a precious gift living on the inside of you. Call the Holy Spirit. You are precious in the eyes of God. Because you were bought, verse 20, our final verse, you were bought with a price, purchased with a precious, and paid for, made his own. So then honor God, how? And bring glory to him in your body. Honor him by asking the Holy Spirit to lead you every day. When you wake up in the morning, do you pray and say, Holy Spirit, I invite you to lead me. I invite you to guide me. One of the favorite, favorite prayers that I pray, Holy Spirit, I'm getting in the back seat so you can have the driver's seat of my life. Because I want you to drive me today. How many of you want the Holy Spirit to drive him? 
I want you to lead me. I want you to guide me. I want you to lead me in the pathway of truth. I want you to bring to my remembrance what the word of God, the true bearing standard has to say. And then when you get into situations and circumstances, regardless of what they are, before you act, ask the Holy Spirit to give you wisdom and guidance. Because that's how God speaks to us now. When you say God is speaking to you, the correct thing to say is through the Holy Spirit. Because that's what he left you. He left you his precious gift. And if the Holy Spirit is called precious here, then guess what? And if he lives in you, then you're precious. In other words, God will clear out hell and high water just to make sure that you have all that you need. That's good news this afternoon. That you have everything you need to live a life of godliness and to do as the scripture says, to honor and bring glory to God and his son Jesus Christ. Now how many of you want to do that? It requires us. It requires us to understand how precious we are. The greatness on the inside of us and then yield to it. Allow that greatness that's in you to lead, guide, and direct you. Have conversations with the Holy Spirit. And when you don't understand things about life, pray and ask God to show you by way of his Holy Spirit, to give you understanding. He will do that. Not just when it comes to sin, but when it comes to everything. Every area and every aspect of our lives. Now, if we'll rest on our feet, I want you to repeat this after me. Those of you that believe in the power of God and in his Holy Spirit. Those that believe that the Holy Spirit lives on the inside of them. I want you to repeat these words after me. Dear God, I thank you that you paid a high price for me. You gave me a precious gift. And I am greater because the greater one lives on the inside of me. I am precious in your sight. I am precious in your sight. Now help me when I look in the mirror at myself to see myself as precious in your sight. I am never alone because you gave me the Holy Ghost. I am never alone because the Spirit of God lives, breathes, moves on the inside of me. Holy Spirit, you are my true bearing spirit. Lead me to the word of God. Guide me to the truth of God's word. When I'm at a crossroad and I need direction, I will look to no other help but you, when I'm not at a crossroad and I think everything is going right, I will still look to you. Every day I'm in a battle, but the battle has already been won. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for living in me. You are not on the sideline. You are on the front line of my life. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for strengthening me when I am weak in my emotions, when I'm weak in my faith. You are the one that strengthens me. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for your greatness, for your power, for your super upon my natural to help me do what I cannot do on my own. 
I need supernatural favor. I need supernatural blessings. I need supernatural power at work in my life. I am never alone. And you are my own. I am bought with the precious price. And I rely on you this day and every day to take hold and control of my life. If you believe it, come on and give God a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. You have been bought with a price. You have the precious gift. And that makes you a precious person because of the precious gift of the Holy Ghost that lives on the inside of you. You are not a reject. You are precious. You are not an afterthought. You are precious. You are precious in God's eyes. You are precious in God's sight. Realize and recognize that you were bought with a high price. Jesus gave his life for your life. With every eye closed, if you're here today and you never made Jesus Christ the Lord and Savior of your life, we read so many scriptures that talked about the power of the Holy Ghost, that talked about living free. But none of it really matters until you get to first base, until you take that first step. And that first step is salvation. That first step is you opening up your heart and your mind and saying, Jesus, I invite you in. I invite you into my life right now. I invite you in. And I'm ready to receive you right now as my personal Lord and Savior. I want to submit to you today that it is so important that you get to first base that you take that first step because that Holy Spirit that's so precious if you don't receive Jesus as Lord and Savior he does not live in you and you can't afford to live without the Holy Spirit in you any longer it's time to take that first step it's time to go to first base and say Lord I surrender my life to you I receive you as my Lord and Savior. If that's you today, and you say, Pastor Anthony, that's me, raise your hand. I want to I acknowledge who you are so we know who we're praying with and we're praying for. We believe by faith that God is still able to move in mighty and miraculous ways in our lives today. I want to deal with this issue of preciousness. If you felt like you've been an afterthought or you've not been valued, whether it be by family or co-workers or friends or whoever, but if you felt like, you know what, just been feeling like I'm, I'm not appreciated, I'm not valued. I want to pray for you. Don't be ashamed if you feel that way because help has come. The Bible says the effectual fervent prayers of the righteous avail of much. If you've been feeling that way, don't deny how you feel. Let's address it today. I want to invite you to come to the altar right now. 
Is there one? You say, that's me, Pastor Anthony. I, I, I do want prayer for that. The Lord showed me there's at least one, but it's up to you to come. But I believe if you'll step out on faith, there'll be a transformation in your life. If you've been feeling that way, whether it's a short time or long time, I'm inviting you to come. I'm inviting you to come right now in the name of Jesus. Is there another today? You're precious, you're precious. You're precious in God's sight. You're precious in the sight of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You are not an afterthought. You're not rejected by God. You are the apple of God's eye. He's given you his spirit. He's given you his power. He's given you the Holy Ghost. So that you can know your worth and your value in him. Is there another today? Is there someone else before we go to pray? Thirdly, if you desire to connect with Love Fellowship Church and membership, covenant connection, we invite you to raise your hand as well. We want to receive you into this family with open arms and love. If there's one in the congregation, Minister Shauna, can you, can you pray? Hallelujah, oh God. We just love you, oh God. We just come worshiping. We lift our hands and hearts before you, oh God, for you are a faithful God. Father, we thank you for how you have moved in this house today, oh God. We thank you that signs, wonders, and miracles have truly manifested, oh God. We thank you for divine restoration, oh God, divine reconciliation, oh God. Father, we thank you for vindicating us back unto you, oh God. Father, we thank you for a shift in our mindsets, oh God. We thank you for a shift in our vision, oh God. Father, we thank you that we can see, oh God, your glory, oh God. Father, we thank you, oh God, that visions are being resurrected in this house, oh God, even as we stand here, oh God, lifting our hands and hearts, oh God. Father, I thank you, oh God, that you promised us that we would see dreams and that we would, our young men would dream dreams oh God and our young girls would, would see visions oh God and Father I thank you oh God that we have your vision oh God Father because in your word oh God you said without a vision the people perish oh God and you've given us a great and a mighty end and a destiny oh God therefore we are full of vision oh God in the name of Jesus oh God Father we thank you for restoring us back unto you oh God we thank you oh God for restoring our families oh God Father in this season oh God Father Father, we pray for families, oh God. We pray for a resurrection of families, oh God. Father, oh God, that we will come together in prayer, oh God. Father, that we will put the petty aside, oh God, and we will stand on your word, oh God. Father, in the name of Jesus, the word that was deposited in us, oh God, as families, oh God, from generations before, oh God, that have been prayed, oh God, we call it forth in the name of Jesus. Father, oh God, bless your families, oh God. Bless your families, oh God. Bless the families, oh God. We bind up the attacks against families in the name of Jesus. We bind up all confusion in the name of Jesus. We loose peace in the name of Jesus. We loose the love of God in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, that we will walk, oh God, and be manifestations of your grace, oh God. Father, that we will be manifestations of your love, oh God. In the name of Jesus, that the fruits of the Spirit would fully flow, oh God, in our families, oh God. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, oh God. We thank you, oh God. We are grateful people, oh God. We lift our hands and our hearts in worship right here. Come on and open up your mouths and bless your Father. Come on and open up your mouths. Bless him with the fruit of your lips, oh God. Come on and talk to your Father in here. 
Basanda. I thank you for the praying people of Love Fellowship Church. Hey, Basanda. I thank you, oh God, that we are decreeing the, the word of the Lord, oh God. We are decreeing and declaring, oh God, for breakthrough, oh God. We are decreeing and declaring, oh God, for your glory, oh God. Yes, Basanda. Hey, Basanda. Father, we just bless you right now. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Yes, oh God. Yes, oh God. Yes, oh God. Father, we feel your presence, oh God. Like a rushing mighty wind in this house, oh God. We feel your presence, oh God. We see you moving, oh God. Hey, yalalabakanda. Hey, yalalabasanda. We thank you for the deliverance in this house, oh God. Come on, we thank you for the deliverance in this house. We thank you for breakthrough. Hey, we thank you for breakthrough. We thank you for breakthrough, yeah. Father, we thank you that you are healing our hearts, oh God. So many of us came to the house with broken hearts, but I thank you, oh God, that you are healing our hearts, oh God. Hey, you're healing our hearts, oh God. The blood, the blood, the blood of Jesus of our hearts. I thank you for peace in our minds, for you are the mind regulator, oh God. We have a new mind in Christ. We stand on your word, oh God. We stand on your word. We believe your word. The report of the Lord, yes. I thank you for wholeness, oh God. We thank you for wholeness, oh God. We thank you for wholeness. Hey, y'all, all, all, all of us see. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Come on and give God a hand clap of praise, amen. You may rest, take your seats, amen, as we thank God for each and every one of you joining in and those that join in online as well. We thank God for the word of God today. Truly we believe by faith that God is able to move in mighty and miraculous ways in our lives. Amen. On this afternoon at 6 p.m., we are having a uh, virtual marriage class. All of those that are married, amen, we invite you to be a part of that. Uh, you can go to our two places. You can go to the website of Love Fellowship Church, and there's a flyer on the website with the meeting ID. It's a Zoom meeting. Or you can go to the Love Fellowship Church Facebook page, and there's a link that you can click on that will also get you in to the marriage class tonight. Amen. When two become one. So we're inviting all of our married couples to join in with us at this particular time, 6 p.m., on tonight. Amen. If our ushers can uh, pass out the envelopes, if anyone needs an offering envelope today, we invite you to, amen, raise your hand at this time as we're preparing for our morning offering. We ought to get free even in our giving. Amen. Because the Bible tells us that God loves a cheerful giver, one that will give out of the abundance of their heart and out of the abundance of their life. Amen. No matter what challenges you face, God always has an answer through his word and by way of his Holy Spirit. Never forget the dynamic duo of the word of God and the Holy Spirit and how powerful they are to set at liberty those that are bound, to bring deliverance to the captive, to teach us that we are called to live free. For whom the Son, Jesus Christ, Sets free is free indeed. And we thank God today for the freedom that we have in him. Also, also for all the men, amen, whether you have signed up. If you haven't signed up, we have a sign-up sheet for our Father's Day breakfast, which will be at 9 a.m. on this, on next Sunday, the 18th, 9 a.m., 
right here in the fellowship hall, we prepared or going to prepare a beautiful breakfast in honor of all fathers. Amen. So we invite you to come out. Please sign up in the foyer area. We want to make sure we get an accurate head count for all of those that will be coming and connecting. Uh, and that includes young men. So all men and young men, amen. It's not about if you're a father, but it's about being a man or a young man. We want you to be a part of this breakfast celebration at 9 a.m. on this upcoming Sunday, Father's Day Sunday. We ask you to come and invite a friend as well. Amen. So at this time, if we can uh, collect our offerings, amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we thank you, Heavenly Father. We thank you, Lord, for your great and awesome power manifested in the lives of every born-again believer that is under the sound of our voice. Everyone that is listening online, we thank you for the word of God coming to set them free. For whom the Son, Jesus the Christ, sets free is free indeed. We thank you. We praise you for your great and awesome power manifesting in their lives. And then lastly, we are celebrating the Perkins. Amen. Let's give them a hand clap. Amen. They have cake as they were married a few weeks back. God bless me to have the privilege of marrying, amen, this power couple. And we thank God for them and all that God is about to do in their lives. And we invite you to hang out with them, amen, for a few minutes. Grab some cake. Uh, congratulate them. So many people don't honor marriage. They don't even care about marriage. They don't even think about marriage. Marriage is just an afterthought. It's something that. Uh, I'll do it if I want to, but I don't have to. But I, but I believe what the Word of God says, that marriage is honorable, amen, in the sight of God. It's honorable. And so when, when, when a young couple, amen, decides to, to get married, that's a high honor as well, amen. And so let's celebrate with them. Let's, let's pray for them. Let's encourage them, amen. Let's believe God. That what God put together, no devil in hell or no person will be able to separate. Amen. Praise God. Let us rest on our feet as Deacon Britton comes forward. Amen. Praise the Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you right now in the precious name of Jesus. We thank you for the word of God. We thank you for all of those that are not only hearers, but doers of your word today. Live free, live free, live free. You have called each and every one of us to live free. Even in our giving, we must be free. So, Lord, we thank you for the gifts of love, the tithes, the offerings. We thank you, Lord God, that they are being used for the advancement of your kingdom, for the saving of lost souls. Lord, we thank you that the poor and the needy will be helped, even through the giving on today. And we just bless you. And we praise you in Jesus' name. Now, God, even as we prepare for the benediction right now, we close out this service and we transition over to the reception. Lord, we pray that this week will be better than last week. This week will be greater than any other week that we've experienced since we've been on this earth because we're going to live free. We're going to live totally free for you. We're going to allow the Holy Spirit to do what only the Holy Spirit can do in our lives. We thank you, we honor you, and we praise you for the freedom that we have in you. And it is in Jesus' precious and holy name we pray. Amen. Hold fast just for a moment. Are there any first-time guests? Are you here for the first time? Raise your hand. We want to recognize you.